Hello, I'm John Day. In this video, I'm going to show you how to correctly name your lists and libraries in SharePoint. This demonstration applies to SharePoint 2010, 2007, and 2003. What we'll do is we'll first explain how the URL limitations apply to SharePoint. We'll then look at how to identify the difference between the name and the title properties and then we'll create a library based on those concepts. So what are these URL limitations? Well, without getting too technical, any web URL cannot exceed 260 characters and any object you create such as a site, a library, a list, a view page or even uh, items like file names for documents cannot exceed 128 characters. So what happens if you try and create a site or library that breaches those limitations? We'll get this sort of display on your screen and it's telling us that we cannot exceed those limitations when we try to create a library or list or a site. So how do I get around it when we will be creating SharePoint site collections and you'll have subsites and you'll have subsites within them and then a list or a library with documents in them and even the document name when you go to create a document or upload a document if it exceeds that limitation can cause some trouble. So you need to see how we can prepare the list objects the names better so that we don't come to that situation. Now when you're using SharePoint Designer it's quite straightforward to create a site or a list or a library and keep the name and the title different but it's hard if you're using them in the browser especially when you're creating a list or library because you don't see them as a comparison you see them as one text box. So I'm going to show you how to create a site first. You can see the difference when I create a new site I get the option to create a title and a URL name so I can see the difference in them. A title is cosmetic it changes the way the user sees the identity of that site. The name is physical it's what they see in the URL. So if I was creating a subsite for example for human resources the title could be lengthy and very descriptive, but the name, because of the limitation of 260 characters, I would be more careful with and maybe put in HR. When the human resources site is completed, you can see on the breadcrumb trail and in the navigate up button, the title is displayed. But inside the URL, you can see the name is displayed. So with sites it's quite straightforward but with lists and libraries when you're creating them in the browser it's not so easy to spot the difference between the two properties. For example I'm going to go into this site actions I'm going to create a new library for my training material for my human resources site. So I'm going to create a new library using more options filter by libraries templates and there I have my document library but notice there is only one box which actually represents both the name and the title so how does this work well name can never change once you create a name it can never change so I think of the name first the name I wanted to give to the library was training material but that's too lengthy and it has spaces and spaces are converted to percentage 20 in the web address which looks a bit confusing a little bit messy so I'm going to give it a short name like train mat and I'm going to click create and there is my new library and as you can see if I go to the browse tab I have train mat in the breadcrumb trail and I have it in the quick launch pane on the left and furthermore I have train mat sitting in the web address so it's nice and short in the URL but I want it to be more meaningful in the title and the quick launch well I can do that without affecting the name 
if I go to the library tab and then go to the library settings I'm entering into what says title description and navigation notice it says title description and navigation but when I click on it the page option shows name it represents both and once the name has been created it can't be changed so if I go into this now and apply a better name what I'm actually doing really is applying a better title for the library so now you can see on the browser I have the training material title I have it inside the library there in the quick launch pane I have training material but if I go back to the web address it still says train mat so again the name doesn't change and something else that's quite useful about giving shorter names is if you do apply any other control or access to the object for example I have the ability in my SharePoint server to specify an incoming email address for my library so if people haven't got access directly to the SharePoint server they can email their documents to the library instead and the library will attach them into the library as normal. So if I use an incoming email, what I can do is enable the email and I would use the same name that are given to the library or just in case I have other sites that have got the same library name I could specify the library name, full stop and then my site name. Or you could do site name dot library name. You can play around with the address box in there and make it as unique as possible but again I'm using the same name objects that the people have associated to the web address and it makes the email address easier for them to remember so when you create sites lists libraries even view pages for your lists and libraries remember the name is unique it cannot change in the browser if you keep the name simple it abides by the limit of the 268 characters. The title, use that to be more friendly, descriptive identity and you can change that as often as you need. Comments about my videos are welcome on the YouTube channel or you can contact me via email johndayqa at live.co.uk If you're interested in any IT training courses in the UK contact the QA's website or you can contact them via email info at qa.com. Thank you very much.